Today, we'll talk about the process of recreating recombinant DNA. This lesson was made by Tyler Hogue and Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom. What is recombinant DNA? The technical definition is DNA molecules formed by laboratory methods of genetic recombination, such as molecular cloning, to bring together genetic material from multiple sources, creating sequences that would not otherwise be found in biological organisms. This definition can be boiled down to taking one piece of DNA and combining it with another strand of DNA. First, we need some vocabulary. A plasmid is a circular self-replicating form of DNA found in bacteria. It's important to notice that this isn't the chromosomal bacterial DNA pictured here in red. There are also enzymes. You might have encountered this term with other biological processes, but here, enzymes act as a catalyst to cut at specific DNA sequences. This process of DNA cutting is also called digestion. To help understand how enzymes work, you could think of them as molecular-sized scissors specialized to specific DNA codes. Before we get into molecular-level steps of creating recombinant DNA, check out how recombinant DNA is made with this virtual lab bench activity. Pause the video, connect to this website, and select Bacterial Transformation from the main menu. You've seen the lab bench steps to create recombinant DNA, but let's zoom into their molecular level. This is an overview of the process, but we'll go through step by step. First, the target gene from the human DNA, in this case, human growth hormone, is isolated. A bacterial plasmid is extracted from a bacterial cell. Enzymes are applied next. The enzyme here is ECOR1. Remember, enzymes act as scissors, cutting the DNA at a specific sequence. The cuts from the enzyme create sticky ends, or overhangs, in the DNA. The sticky ends on the human gene fit into the sticky ends on the plasmid because they were cut by the same type of enzyme. The sticky ends of both the plasmid and the gene come together, forming a complete plasmid. This process is called DNA recombination, and the plasmid product is recombinant DNA. The recombinant DNA plasmid is inserted into a bacterial cell. The bacterial cell will clone itself many times over, therefore making many copies of the recombinant DNA plasmid. Here's an overview again of the steps we covered. Pause the video and go over the steps again to make sure you understand the process. Recombinant DNA has been important in the medical field. An example of this is insulin. Before 1977, the only source of insulin was through animals that we found to be compatible with humans. This was an expensive and risky undertaking since people could have allergic reactions to animal-based insulin. In 1977, Dr. Riggs, Dr. Itakura, and Dr. Boyer produced human insulin that was reproduced by E. coli plasmids. Today, the vast majority of insulin is produced by using recombinant DNA. Let's review what we learned. Recombinant DNA is DNA that has been combined with another piece of DNA. The process to create DNA first involved using an enzyme to cut the plasmid and target gene and then create sticky ends. The sticky ends of both parts combine, forming a plasmid that has recombinant DNA. The plasmid is inserted into bacterial cells where the cell can replicate in laboratory conditions that you saw on the virtual lab bench. Recombinant DNA can help create synthetic drugs, including insulin. For an extension activity, Investigate other medical and scientific research benefits of rDNA and write a small report on your findings.